fella. We can be that mistake. Let's do this. What up, y'all? Hey, guys. We're Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. Coming at you with more Football Ultras. Yay! Today we are checking out why Ultras are so important for football. What is your take? Why do you think they're important for football? Uh, passion yeah. uh, for the, the sport. Yeah. Um, rile up the crowd. Um they set the ambiance. Set the yeah. Set the tone for the yep. whole uh, match. And we've obviously, if, if you've been following us a while, you know we've checked out yeah. uh, many f- uh, football moments, soccer as we call it. Yep. Yes, we're, I can see the comments now. It's not called soccer. Yeah. Whatever, dude. Whatever. <laughs> it, Come we, over here. Yes. Come over here and say football. And see what people think you're talking about. Right, exactly. Plus, getting y'all triggered to comment that helps with the <laughs> algorithm. So, yeah. thank you. This will be interesting to see uh, what's uh, what their take is on why ultras are so important. Now, ultras are like the super fans, not to be confused with the hooligans. Yeah. Um, because I, the hooligans destroy shit. Yeah. Ultras pump up crowds. At least I hope that's no, what it I, is. I hope so. I could be wrong. All of all I know is that there's flares already. Uh huh. So yeah, <laughs> which apparently are illegal in the UK. <laughs> but you see them in every match. I, so. I mean, Bob Mortimer knows uh, standard fireworks. Yeah, these are just standard flares. <laughs> standard flares. <laughs> Let's go in. We see ultras all around the world. From the frightening to the incredible, they are clearly the beating heart of many football clubs. But they're also a source of controversy. So we decided to break it down once and for all. What is an ultra? And what do they do? We've all grown used to scenes like this out of Italy and Germany. Scenes from this to this in the MLS. The what? glory of the Balkans, and all too often see them portrayed as criminals for moments like this. But what are ultras and what do they do? Originally used by the Gazzetta dello Sport to describe a group of supporters in the 1960s, ultras or ultras are one of the most broadly defined subcultures in the world. However, the term was only appropriated by an actual fan group in 1969 with Sampdoria's Ultras Tito Cucciaroni and Torino's Ultras Granata. Since then, fans have reappropriated the name, but given the global reach of the game, the term is far from clearly defined. Ah, Italians damn. interpreted foreign styles of spectatorship and made their own, something between the South American Barras and Brazilian Torcidas and the British Hooligans. Thus, Ultras groups were established born to represent the distinct cultures and traditions from which they originated, taking inspiration from the time of city-states in which autonomous cities would defend their identity and their interests against others. Ultras value the defense of their territory, which is a feeling that has its roots in the historical age. They are the most fanatic supporters of a team, representing a sort of 12th man. Contributing to what's happening on the field, there's like no feeling like it. An ultra is constantly committed to the club, setting up for match days and social events during the week, attending training sessions and youth games, and showing up hours ahead of match day for any last minute preparations. Away match. So uh, I, what I'm getting from this is ultra is the term uh, adopted by ultra fans, ultra uh, supporters of the team. Yeah, so they're like your 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 super fans. Yeah, super these are, fans. These are team. These are uh, like a fan base that is not just a fan base. This is more than that. This yeah, is yeah, it's their life. The, the, it's, it's like a part time job. Right. They do what they need to do, and then the rest of their time is dedicated to their team. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, like the guy was saying, like going to youth matches, right? Going right. to like different support clubs of their club, like, right? Right. So they're yeah. So it's, okay, it's more than just going to a game and causing a riot. Yeah, it's like they're they're invested in the team, not just in a buy the ticket way. Right. Right. It's I see all the com- every time uh, at least. Once, twice uh, a week. In America, it's 
sports are a pastime. Over there, rest of the world, it's religion. Yeah. It's part of their identity. And, and it makes sense. I mean, come on. Like, you have neighbors in the UK that had have had wars with each other. Yeah. And so this is just a less barbaric way of declaring war or going to war. It's a modern day war. Yeah, yeah. For all the rest of the countries, you, they've mentioned, you know, a lot of South American countries. Yeah. Like on, and they've mentioned like India and Thailand, Greece, Greece, Germany. Yeah. So it's it's all over. It's all over. And I I heard a couple of American accents too. Yeah, me too. That lady. Like, the yeah, la- I was yeah. Like, what? Are are MLS teams like that too? I doubt it. I yeah. No, I because mean, they would have made the news. The people would have been in jail. Uh huh. <laughs> like, they, uh, when you get a massive amount of people chanting stuff, they usually go away. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Go. <laughs> At least the ringleaders do. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. are especially important. It's where one proves their true commitment to the group. We played in Bremen and uh, there were 20,000 people coming to that game and 16,000 from, from St. Pauli. And the opportunity to show off your pride in another territory. This comes in the form of choreographies, flags, chants, banners and fanzines. The strongest expression of these rituals are usually reserved for anniversaries of the clubs, legendary players, the fan groups themselves, derbies, rivalry games, and finally, big cup matches. Ultras have always been characterized by their rebellious nature. Unlike the British, who support largely rides on reacting to what's happening on the pitch, Ultras make their own show beyond the result. Drums, flares, megaphones, smoke bombs, the opportunity to freely express a collective idea and a unity of devotion all contribute to this atmosphere. Whenever possible, Ultras will march through a city in the corteo, making sure their presence is well known. The group mentality is essential to being an Ultra. Rivalry and friends. Wow, so it's good to know like a lot of these clubs are not financing these uh, shenanigans. They are... uh, (laughs) It's done independently, but they're and also not denying, like not, 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 not definitely not fan, fan financing them, but definitely they're not they're it. not shutting it down. Yes, yes, they don't come up like, well, these acts are deplorable. No. Right, right, no, <laughs> no, they just like, all right, cool. Again, and another theme is you know the your identity uh, of this uh, uh, the team and uh, the region that it's. Uh, Represents. Yeah, I I just think that if we had this level of intensity, it, it, the sport wouldn't work. Yeah, over here. No, like, no, 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 no. It'd be too much chaos that someone somewhere would just try to shut the whole thing down. Right, and you can't advertise on it. That's the main problem. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. And like, and it's also like good to know that it's not like every single game is like that. It's like no. just for a special player, a special occasion, a special. Rivalry, Darby, Darby, yeah, yeah, and, and and I think the closest that we have to something like this in atmosphere wise is college football. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Alabama, uh, Alabama Bible rivalry, Bible Belt football. Yeah, and and with basketball too, Duke versus yeah. NC State. Yep, like that was intense. Yep. Yeah, so so we kind of get it. We we. You, they have to understand that it just there's no way we would ever 100 percent grasp this because we aren't where they're coming from. Right, exactly. You know, but the closest as far as intensity that we can see and relate to is college football. Yeah, exactly. Friendship are the most confusing and turbulent parts of Ultras culture. Of course, there are derbies between two teams of the same city or town, but the motivation behind friendships and distances between these relationships can be truly remarkable. Despite being rivals, Genoa and Sampdoria both have a friendship with Boca Juniors for their connection of immigrants established in the club. Sunas Vezda's Delier, Olympiakos Gate 7, and Spartak Moscow's Fratria have a connection based on being the dominant team from three Orthodox nations. Just as Ultras took inspiration from political protest, 
the actions of ultra groups have been influenced by political ideologies ranging from avowed nationalists to anti-fascists. For example, Celtic Green Brigade, who forged international links and friendships with other anti-fascist ultra groups across Europe on political grounds, as can be seen with their friendship with German side St. Pauli. While on the contrary, Lazio's Irriducibili consider Livorno and Atalanta among their biggest rivals due to their political stance. Lazio's ultras consider themselves to be far right, while Livorno and Atalanta fans are left wing. In recent decades, the culture has become a focal point for the movement against the commercialization of sports and football in particular. Big TV contracts have left stadiums empty, ticket prices are on the rise, and players seem to live in a different reality, where loyalty is lost and the chance of signing for a higher wage bill wins over the chance of acquiring legendary status amongst a group of fans. Yep. Two ultras. That's yep. what it is. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, and, and, and it's like a, an epic global sport that has taken the commercial side of it away. Mm -hmm. It's about skill and, and, and loyalty to the club. Right, right. Whereas here, it's all people that have been bought. Uh huh. Yeah, bought and sold. It's very commercialized here yeah. in the states. Yeah. And let, I've seen comments like around like when the Super Bowl was happening, like people uh, and most of our audience is non-American, yep. and they saying they couldn't watch it because just so many commercials. Yeah. It drove them insane. Where, you know, part of watching the Super Bowl is watching is for the it. commercials yeah. too. Uh, but so, but even without the Super Bowl, like. There's still a lot of commercials during a regular season football game. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and it is unbearable. It's like mm -hmm. four four hours for a game that takes one hour to play. Right, right. That's too long. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and like, the, the fact that of Ultra's culture is kind of keeping prices uh, – regulated with some clubs like that's yeah that's a good thing that prioritizes the fan experience and you know yeah. actually going to the game and they don't need to spend money on marketing when their fan base is the marketing team yes they are the the focus group <laughs> yeah. they are the yeah. pr team it, that's exactly it and so it, it's it's interesting it's interesting mm -hmm. that that the ultras or the fans the super fans are the the voice of the club yeah whereas the club just has to be the club that houses the skilled players. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else is part of that club. Like yeah. The, you know. it, it's interesting, uh, I mean, not to dive into pol politics or anything, but that a lot of it is, a lot of the friendships between clubs are, some of them are politically motivated. Yeah. Um, I, I you just don't see that in clubs in the in the United States with American football or uh, our, our MLS soccer or baseball or NASCAR or a NHL or anything like that. They're you not really, really politicized. They are... they are. Uh, we tend to keep politics out of sports, even though politics has one hell of a way of trying to infiltrate sports. Yeah, it, it does. But, uh, again, you can't commercialize it. Yeah. Advertisers... Uh, they stay away from it. Stay That's away from it. That's why they don't... They shut it down. That's why yeah. they shut that shit down. Yeah. Like, boy, I just... This is what? What do they say? Uh, like the twelfth man. Yeah, the twelfth man. On that's the what this is. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. And that's it's cool. It's really cool, man. Yeah. Football at the highest level often feels like a sanitized product, built more for those in the main stand and commercial suites than for the most devoted fans behind the goal. Simultaneously, authorities continue to innovate new forms of repression against fans. I used to manage our stadium, but I got to the Fradina, and I still make a Zovan, the Sukhoi card, the Mitartamaza, the Sunatish Datum, the Tempelaka, the Edashanya Navid, email, teammate, the teammate, Ilatra Tanya Lanyamata. Bans on wow. pyro, megaphones, Aye. and drums, bans on standing room and away travel have had little to no impact of instances on stadium violence. Today, maneuvering the minefield of stadium laws has become a nightmare. These laws have been introduced under the guise of reducing instances of violence at football, but have largely had the adverse effect of killing the atmosphere at many grounds. The oh. fringe elements of these groups who seek out physical confrontation continue to operate as security forces hopelessly seek to curb it through football specific legislation. This has left fans feeling criminalized, suspicious that states and corresponding football federations would rather see them banished from the game. All right, hold on. Let's... <laughs> Dude, I didn't... What? Okay. Let me That's back weird. that up a little bit. That... <laughs> what the fuck is that? Let's just... I, I, oh. This this is what we're looking at right here. <laughs> Who brings that into 
a fucking game. <laughs> oh god, dude. I knew y'all were intense, but <laughs> this oh. guy needs therapy. All I know is enough beer. And that, you got yourself, I think, uh, 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 a gold-tier crowd control weapon. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, dude. God, this guy First needs... of all, how the hell do you sneak a chainsaw past security? Yeah. Oh, my God. This guy needs to get laid. Could you imagine the cavity he had to shove that in? <laughs> like, holy crap. Everyone brings a little tiny piece. Oh, oh man, my yeah, God, dude, that's you, wild. You talk about you talk about chafing, man. Yeah, God, <laughs> man. All right. States and corresponding football federations would rather see them banished from the game. Whatever your club or political affiliation, the breadth of Ultras culture around the world is a testament to this beautiful game. At times, this passion can escalate into violence, but this is not an Ultras problem, but a societal one. An Ultras group's existence revolves around intense, coordinated support for their team through vibrant displays during matches, making noise on the terraces, and highlighting, publicizing, and furthering issues affecting their local territory and in solidarity with other supporter communities. In Egypt, the Ultras of al Ahli and Zamalek have largely been credited for their pivotal role in the uprising of the Egyptian revolution. These are just a small number of the incredible initiatives regularly organized by nearly every Ultras group in the world. Like all groups, Ultras are hard to stereotype and even harder to define. But one thing is for sure, they are not all criminals, and when it comes to football, they remind us of a purer game. One in which you go out and support your team regardless of the names on the back of the shirt, turning friends into family, and being proud of where you come from. Wow. Super cool, man. Like, yeah. Super cool. That like, really, that's, that's, that's two thumbs you know, up. Yeah, it's it's informative, man. Yeah, and, and it's and it's um, it's, it's just awe inspiring. Yeah, yeah. It's like I heard about the Egyptian Revolution. We all did, but I had no idea. Like, that was like football ultras behind that. Well, it makes sense. You get a group of people that know how to rally very quickly, and you use that. Yeah. You use that power of this unspoken ability to just coordinate. Oh, yeah. And and you have yourself a, a pretty quickly rallied uh, group. Yeah. Uh, but it's we are at least 100 years away from something relating to this. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't see it happening anytime soon. There's a lot of stuff that has to fail. Yeah, yeah. For this to... to, to and I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying there's a lot of hypersensitive people that need to leave the gene pool for this to work. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> you know, like there's a lot. We're about we're about two generations out. Yeah, you, you, we're calling it right now. Two generations out. Yeah, from <laughs> watching this stuff. Yep, you're in your stateside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not saying it's not possible because, like, we we can rally over the dumbest shit, but we don't rally behind a sports team. No, no, <laughs> and and when we do, it just it's just like, it, it, it's it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't compare. Right, like that one video we did was com- a comparison. You're like, there's nothing to compare. That's tame. That's so we're we're. Go team. At the same time, we're like, oh, it's intense. Yeah. I am a Baltimore Ravens fan. You're a Washington, whatever their name is, team. Yeah. A a fan. We can sit here and talk football and not strangle each other. Yeah. That's that's American sports in a nutshell. (laughs) Yeah. And and, and it's just, yeah, and that wouldn't happen there. That wouldn't happen there. Right. Well, you got to keep them separated you have or else to. they're going to kill each other. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that, that's the one thing. American football you look at the stands and you'll see jerseys of people that aren't even associated with the team. Right. Like we'll go to a, I'll go to a, a then Washington Redskins. Mhm. And you'll see like they're playing the Broncos, and then you'll see an Eagles shirt. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Uh-huh. And it's just a fan of football. 
Yeah. Going go, to see a football game. Go sports team. Yeah, go said sports team. Yeah. <laughs> go, go sports. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So it's yep. it's, it's different. Uh-huh. I mean. Comment below some other uh, uh, titles of videos that you want us to check out. Like, yes. We, oftentimes we've done individual players, and they just don't seem to get the clicks as much. Uh, no. But, uh, well, because it's so divisive, I think. It's so divisive, yeah. You're, you're so. either a fan or you're not, and there's a lot more people that are not than they are. Right, exactly. So, <laughs> which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But but, uh, but these are a lot of fun to check out. Thanks for liking, commenting, yeah. subscribing, hitting that bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely. Till next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck, and unplug, and do epic shit like this. Later. See you next time.